you know, we've seen some signs of correction in uh, uh, equities. Uh, 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 emerging market equities also uh, seeing a bit of a correction. The MSCI emerging market index down about three to four percent from the recent highs. Uh, your thoughts on whether this is start of a bigger correction? Yes. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, yes. So I think really the two uh, overhanging uh, issues here is the uncertainty over over Brexit. And there's a number of events this week that will either lead to a no-deal Brexit or quite possibly uh, a shifting of uh, the deadline for, for Brexit away from sort of the more immediate sort of March 29 till perhaps later this year or early next year. So that will be worked through this, this week. And that has been um, hanging over the markets. There's also some uncertainty regarding um, the the deal between China and the United States on 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 on, on trade, and I think one of the issues that's uh, that, that's prominent there is about um, you know, m mutual compliance on whatever deal is actually uh, struck. Uh, so th these two factors have have you know have led to an increase in risk premia. They have probably also been behind the U.S. dollar being a little bit stronger, which has hit some emerging markets like Korea more than others. Um, we have actually sort of, you know, been positioned much more heavily in ASEAN and India, which have held up much better uh, than uh, than in North Asia, which were which which were underweight. But uh, no, we don't necessarily think unless we get some, you know, extremely poor uh, uh, news out of either either Brexit or uh, the, the the trade talks, which we're not expecting. Uh, then I think we're still in the middle of this, you know, first half uh, emerging markets rally. Okay. You know, well, uh, Brexit so far uh, was not very material to emerging markets, we thought. Uh, what about the global growth numbers? I mean, the pathetic jobs data of 20,000 uh, coming on the back of ECB cutting its growth forecast, uh, a terrible Chinese trade data. Uh, is there a global growth story that's beginning to look much worse? And does that have any bearing for equities? Right, so some of um, addressed two of those issues there. First of all, as far as global growth, growth is concerned, as I've mentioned on your program previously, we are actually see a recession in the United States by the middle of next year to maybe sort of Q3 or thereabouts. Uh, the developed world in particular so it's slowing down prominently between now and that particular point in time. Um, so our view is, is that you know the, the tax cut effect capture uh, uh, is in 2018 and 2019. So we still have, you know, orderly growth in 2019, and our view is that 2020 is when that sort of becomes a little, a little bit more sharp. However, in that context, it's important to note that the the Fed and other central banks are easing their policy from their previously sort of tight position. Now, this easier credit in the context of still respectable but sort of moderate, moderate, moderate growth is the fuel, in our opinion, for this sort of near-term rally. Now, we made this call late November of last year, and it's worked out quite well. We're seeing a bit of a correction here at the moment, and we, we expect that to continue until the markets start to focus on 2020. Now, our view is that it's probably another quarter or so away. Um, so that's the first point. The second point is, is regarding Brexit. The way the link between Brexit and emerging markets is via the dollar. So if there was uh, a disorderly Brexit or a no-deal Brexit that led to a European growth shock, the risk there is, is that you have a flight to the U.S. dollar, which then undermines emerging markets generically. So the link there is actually quite clear. Okay. Paul, hi. Good morning. Uh, now coming to India, you briefly mentioned that the Indian markets have held up much better than the others. We're heading into election time now. Um, in just about a month from now, the national elections will begin. And, you know, with the border tensions being diffused, the expectation is that the current government will come back to power. Uh, do you see a pre-election rally? And as a, a foreign investor, how do you approach this situation? So, uh, so I guess as I've mentioned over the past months, the past few months, uh, India has been our biggest overweight 
you know, and, and some of our funding markets are underweights like Korea, for example, you know, have, have pulled back dramatically, uh, as has uh, are some of our underweights uh, such as Taiwan and, 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 and Korea, which are much more geared into the global trade cycle. India's growth profile is not, and this is really sort of the sort of the key feature about Indian growth is, is that one, with you know the Indian economy is going to outgrow China. Number two, earnings growth, uh, you know, forecast consensus here is you know 20% plus, and that growth is not correlated with the global trade cycle, which is actually very very important. So we stay overweight. It's our biggest overweight. We're about 14% versus benchmark of around 10 uh, for MSCI Asia, Asia X, X Japan. Uh, so that hasn't changed. So you know we, we're we're positioned already sort of. You know, being you know, quite heavily overweight. And uh, yes, I think in terms of looking at fresh money from a global asset allocation perspective, India should be front and center.